it would have made a lovely bonfire, but I held my tongue and I've done it the right way. That's what I'm trying to do, the right way. Doing everything by the book. Some people blame me for knocking down it. It's probably a hundred years ago, it was a beautiful building, but it's one and a half million pounds it was going to cost to renovate it to its original mm -hmm. yeah. look. Yeah. And then what would I have? I would have a big, beautiful shop empty for the next 20 years because nobody wants a big shop in this location. That's the sad thing about it. Yeah. Nobody wants this. You know, it's past its purpose. We need to move on. Welcome to another video of Walk on the Wild Side. And I'm here in a very breezy Blackpool. It's first thing on a Monday morning. It's around about seven o'clock. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> the weather's taken a bit of a nosedive. We had loads of rain last night. I'm not surprised if we uh, had some flooding. It absolutely chucked it down uh, yesterday. And uh, it seems to have really turned now, the weather here in Blackpool. But uh, uh, there is something going on here. I'm at South Shore, just across the Yates's over there. This is where we are. I'll show you around, not far from the Pleasure Beach. There's something going on just over here, down Waterloo Road. They started the demolition of the former heart store, which used to be the Woolworths in the olden days. It's been waiting for a long time. Um, there's been a bit of a battle with the council and the owner, because the owner wanted to turn it into a car park, eventually turn it into apartments. It's become derelict. It's been derelict for years and years. Looks really, really bad. And finally, they're starting today. So I'm just making my way over to uh, Waterloo Road now. And we'll have a little look at what's going on down here. They just, they blocked the road off down here. And let's take a little look, shall we, what's going on because uh, they look just come in here and starting to get this thing ready for, for coming down. I'll just quickly show you around. So this is, uh, I like those flats there actually, yeah, quite nice aren't they? And we've got a joke shop there as well on the corner. And uh, just over here we've got Brooks Collectibles. Brooks Collectibles, I'll have to go in there sometime, won't I? Really, really nice looking shop that. And of course, next door to that, we've got Notariani's. Famous, uh, famous ice has been going for such a long time here in Blackpool, but this is what it's all about here, folks. It's all about this, this store here, the demolition. I'm not sure when they're going to be starting it, but uh, it looks like the, the uh, as you can see it looks a bit of a state doesn't it and it's just become more derelict as time's gone on and the guy that owns it has been wanting to turn it into a car park for all this time but Blackpool Council wouldn't let him so he's been in a bit of a, a bit of a situation with the council I just want to show you something down here now down here can you see we've got a car park here and this is what the guy was talking about. You know, Howard, that owns the, the building over there, he owns quite a lot of car parks in Blackpool. And this car park that we're looking at here was literally, it, it just appeared very, very quickly. And he said that it's owned by somebody out of town. And they were able to build this car park, which was actually cleared for an easy hotel, if you remember. I did cover it. I said that they were supposed to be building an easy hotel on this site here and they put up the steelwork for it but then something happened and it fell through and it never happened. But as you can see it is a car park so obviously somebody from out of town got permission to build a car park here and yet Howard who owns this place over here has been waiting years and years and it never happened and as you can see now they're preparing it to be demolished so there you go but I remember when this was a Woolworths store 
Yeah. I remember when all this area here was busy, thri thriving, lots of people. Uh, it was a purpose-built Woolworth store, I believe, and it had these quite unique windows that kind of go around the corners. You can still see them. You can still see the original windows there. Yeah, and there used to be lots of entrances as well. There's one, two, three, there's about three different entrances on each side. Not all of them were open, but, but uh, yeah, let me know if you remember the Woolworths. And then, of course, it became Hearts. And then Hearts uh, kind of, they became quite uh, famous as well. They became very, um, lots of people liked the Hearts store because they had loads and loads of stuff in there and they were very cheap but they're also known for selling Christmas decorations at all times of the year, yeah. So they, they made quite a name for themselves here. Yeah, so what they're doing at the moment is pulling all the boards off. It's surrounded by boards and they'll get inside it. Don't see any diggers at the moment. There, so, oh, sirens, kicking off in Blackpool, but it's all right, it's just an ambulance. Look at Waterloo Road there, look, look at it, look, it's so quiet at the moment, look. This is Waterloo Road at, well, it's got on a little bit now, it's around about, what, 20 past seven in the morning. Really, really quiet part of town that struggled a little bit. I used to come up here all the time, Waterloo Road in the olden days. It used to be thriving, but it has struggled quite a bit. Just on the left there is the, the main post office. Not quite as grand as a post office in town, but it was still a main post office though. And it's quite some building that, isn't it? And just behind me, we've got a little street here called Gordon Street. And this, we've got the pub here called The Bull. Look at that there, The Bull. It's a nice looking pub that, isn't it? The Bull. So, so they've just sort of turned up and they've began. The work on this store here. They're going to be taking it down today, I think. Starting on it today. So, there you go. You can see right into it there. The old Woolworth store. How about that? Let's have a little look at Bond Street. So, we're now looking down Bond Street. As you can see, we've got it blocked off here. Looking straight up there towards the Pleasure Beach. You can see the Grand National turn up there, look. Look how quiet it is. Mind you, it doesn't change a whole lot during the day, you know. And there are some nice buildings down here, though. We've actually got one just here. Look at this building here, look. It's called Mrs. Johnson's Emporium. It's like a little shopping arcade. We used to go in here as well. There's like lots of different businesses in there. And now it's uh, a haberdashery. A wagon turning up it. I think that that is. Well, it's got a lot of fencing on it or something. They're preparing for the demolition of the former Hart store and Woolworth store here in South Shore. Blackpool. Wild Coast Hindu Society. Never noticed that before. Community hub. I'm going to show you something down this alley here. Look. Oh, I'll tell you what, there's some nice architecture. Look at that there. I 
you know, I've never noticed that before. Look at all that. On the side of that building there, look. That is amazing, isn't it? Just over here we've got a mural. The wizard and the fish. And the lizard or whatever it is here. So there you go. We're getting ready to demolish this door right here. It's going to be history very soon. Take a look at it now because soon it's going to be history and it's been so long, so, so long since uh, it be became empty and I'm sure a lot of people around here will be glad to see it down because it's been an eyesore So I've actually got Howard here who owns the building so do you want to tell us a little bit about what's going on Howard? Yeah happily thank you um, Today's the big day it's like Christmas come early for me I uh, acquired this property uh, five years ago ish and uh, applied for I went right down the right channels, applied for planning permission and uh, got refused by the local authority on the grounds that the building was uh, locally listed. Unfortunately, uh, the building itself was in a very poor state when I bought it and it hadn't had any maintenance done on it for at least 25, 30 years and then I come along assuming that it would be get permission to knock it down and then I've been through five years of uh, waiting. I've had hundreds of thousands of pounds invested in this building. Fortunately, uh, uh, I've now had got permission to knock it down and then we'll go, go forward. Currently, I'm awaiting a planning decision uh, for 23, two and three bedrooms apartments with a large restaurant, cafe, bistro on the first floor with uh, bin store offices and parking at the rear. But I've not been able to do anything with it because I've still been waiting for the red tape. But enforcement came along because the roof collapsed on the inside and they just said in a bad storm this could, uh, you know, could potentially Collect, kill yeah. somebody. If the roof, if the roof yeah. blew off in the... Uh, storms that are coming, somebody on Bond Street or Waterloo Road could have got seriously injured, so it's what they call a uh, uh, an emergency demolition. Uh, sick of making it safe, but the kids keep going in, vandalising it, and obviously the weather has not helped. But it'll be a nice clear site, and uh, then maybe we might get the planning permission passed and uh, get some development on it. Yeah, I have seen the plans for the, the, the building. It does look very, very nice building and it will be a, a big improvement on the area. It would actually start, it's like a catalyst, I believe, for investment in the area, which is obviously, you know, not doing very well. If you look down Bond Street, you'll see 35, 45 derelict empty shops. Um, maybe there's 15 shops still surviving. And at one, t one time, this was the best shopping street in, in Blackpool, the whole of Blackpool. Yeah, but, you I know, remember it myself. We used to come down here as kids and we yeah. spent all day down here, you know, we'd yeah. in all the shops and the Woolworths, of course, which this was the Woolworths, wasn't it, before it became Yeah, uh, for, I think it was built about 1910. And uh, sadly, 
the people that took over it, Hearts, as they rented it from the owner, who was a very poorly chap, nothing got done. All these um, collapsed uh, mullions and the steels corroded inside. It's all happened over a long period of time. Eh? A lot of people hold me responsible for it, and it's just 100% not true. I can't make movement in stone that takes 25, 35 years to happen, but everybody blamed me. I mean, originally I applied for planning permission for a car park, and that was refused. And it makes me laugh, because just literally around the corner where the Easy Hotel is, 1st of May this year, a man's opened it as a car park, and um, <laughs> that kind of gets me wondering. I mean, I'm not objecting to a car park. And it, well, I think it will be great to see this building down because it has been such a nice one. I'm sure a lot of people around this area will be glad to see it down. Well, so, what I'm going to do in the temporary measure is make it nice, make it safe, and then we'll, we'll see where we're going on from there. But. I came, I came down to take some pictures myself. How long do you think it might be before you get this up, um, permission or to build the apartments? Well, per planning permission, when you put a planning application in, especially when you do a pre-consultation, which I have done, generally takes supposedly 26 weeks. And now I'm in approaching 19, 20 months, uh, and I'm still waiting. I mean, unlike the chap round the corner who, uh, kind of said he's not uh, asking permission he's praying for forgiveness so I went the wrong way I asked for permission and uh, been refused a couple of times Le literally what I should have done is I should have done what he did knock the building down straighten it all up make it into a car park and then say oh sorry I've done something wrong but uh, no I went hopefully the right way I can't tell you, you know, how many people have actually said to me over the years, why don't you burn it down? Even people in very prominent positions. And I said, well, I could go that way. I could do that and spend me later years in prison if somebody gets injured. Uh, it would have made a lovely bonfire, but I held my tongue and I've done it the right way. That's what I'm trying to do, the right way. Doing everything by the book. Some people blame me for knocking down it, which probably a hundred years ago was a beautiful building, but it's one and a half million pound it was going to cost to renovate it to its original mm -hmm. yeah. look. Yeah. And then what would I have? I would have a big, beautiful shop empty for the next 20 years because nobody wants a big shop in this location. That's the sad thing about it. Yeah. Nobody wants this. You know, it's past its purpose. We need to move on. You yeah. know. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, so, anyway, um, thanks very much for that. I'm mean, yeah. still here for a while, so if you think of something, <laughs> I'll grab you. Go. So anyway, that was Howard there. There you go. Thanks, Howard. Cheers. Uh, so, um, he's uh, obviously given his story there. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, but uh, I'm sure that uh, when this thing comes down, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a lot of memories, you know, of course, in there for people down the years. When it was a Woolworths, of course, and since it's been Hearts, because I know loads of people love Hearts, but there you go, it's going to be history. A piece of history after today. So we ended up going into the Pit Stop Cafe here on Waterloo Road and uh, Howard gave us a little bit more of his insights into Blackpool and how it's going and uh, how it should go forward. Blackpool as a holiday destination has come, you know, it's come a long way. And where the old hotels and bed and breakfasts are falling down when they did it successful in the old days was when they had the wakes and holidays from the likes of Glasgow, Edinburgh, Leeds, etc, Stoke-on-Trent, all over the country, people used to travel here, came on the train and came on the coaches. 
when they came on the trains, Blackpool uh, train stations, we had the biggest train stations in the world, not in the country, in the world. You know, prior to the likes of Grand Central Station, etc., etc. But people used to come and stay in a B and B or a hotel for two weeks. Now they don't do that anymore. You know, people are more adventurous and they like going to exotic holidays. So Blackpool is a, a day trip now. When they built the M55, that spelt the death knell for Blackpool B&Bs and hotels. Because people coming travelling from the likes of Leeds, say, or Manchester, it takes an hour. In the holidays, when they used to come for the two weeks, they used to have to come on a shower bank, on a coach, or on the train. And they stayed. So the, the families used to stay in them same hotels every year, same time of the year, certain holidays. That doesn't happen in money more because a man will get in a car in Manchester and he'll drive to Blackpool with his family of two or three kids and the prams and all that and they'll spend the day here. And then they'll say, do we spend £100 for the hotel, or £200 for the hotel for all the kids and us? Or do we just drive home and have cocoa at home and then we'll go to somewhere else tomorrow? And that's what they're doing. So when they built the M55, it effectively damaged the hotel business. But moving forward, Blackpool needs a lot of investment, right? And they've got to recognise that these B&Bs and these hotels are no longer fit for purpose people want better and the bigger brand of hotels the likes of the Hilton's and the Hamptons and the travel lodges this is what the quality what people want now we've got the land you've just got to take the bold step of getting rid of some you know you've got to get rid of some of these old properties it's really important that they look to the future if this place is going to be successful they need a lot of investment in new accommodation and then people will want to stay, especially further afield visitors. And we can get them here if we, if we clean the place up a bit. So you've got to take care of them. You don't want people driving around for an hour trying to find a parking space because they don't want to get a ticket. And Blackpool Council earned nearly a million pounds on parking fines last year yeah and Blackpool will tell you that they are one of the uh, least ticketing towns in the country you know these, these other towns that ex, you know outside of Blackpool that earn bigger revenue than that the uh, local um, traffic ones are really good because they do you know they've got a horrible job but they are very, I would say, um, decent traffic wardens. They don't just hide behind lampposts and jump out. They give people 10, 15 minutes before they put a ticket on. I've seen it, I've witnessed it. And people just... What I've experienced is people say, where can I park? And I'm sorry, this car park's full. And where can I park? Where can I park? And, they say, and when you say, you know, everywhere's full, which it is at busy times, air shows, bank holidays, illumination weekends, firework displays, brings hundreds of thousands of people in. They just go and stick it on the promenade and say, I'll pay the £35 parking fine because it's less aggravation. They're literally right where they want to be. And I always think, um, if you want to be in Blackpool, you're not going to park your car at Preston and walk or get a train. If you want to come to Blackpool, parking at Blackpool Airport when you want to go to the tower is never going to happen to anybody with, uh, you know. I think these two want bacon, I want bacon and egg bacon. The, the only thing about Preston is that um, <clears throat> it's something just going on there. Well, it's steaming hot, isn't it? This nice little, what's the cap called? The bud stop cap? The, the pit stop cap. Pit stop cap, that's it. Yeah, we're going to be here a few times this week. No, I'm all right. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, I've only had a bit of sauce, yeah. Any brown sauce as well, or just red? Just red, please. Oh. Sweet. Yeah. Right, so uh, I'm just leaving the uh, 
the pit stop cafe now here on Waterloo Road in Blackpool back out into the wind again I've just had a, a bacon bomb and a cup of tea there treated by Howard there you go. very very reasonable really nice community cafe that there. it's worth looking at it's worth a visit if you come into Blackpool down this end of town South Shore and uh, we'll just have a little look now and see how they're doing they're getting set up now they're putting a load of boards down I'll just turn the camera around getting a load of boards down there now for the, the big wagons to come in and start to uh, knocking this building down so there you go it's the beginning of the end for this store here in South Shore Blackpool on Waterloo Road it started off life as Woolworths we spent many hours in this store and around the area as well Waterloo Road here and Bond Street back in the olden days back in the sort of 70s and 80s but now it's about to become history I'm going to leave it there now for this video I'll come back a bit later on when they started to to knock into it and started to demolish it he reckons it's going to take about a week or something like that anyway I'll see you again in the next video if you like this video hit the like button and also hit subscribe and tick the bell for notifications of new videos and I'll see you again on the next one